What did you do today that you loved doing? What was this thing that while you were doing it, you were totally in the zone and could easily lose all track of time because you were so absorbed in doing this thing? When was the last time you did something that really brought you joy? Finding something you'd love to do is one of the main elements of the Japanese concept of ikigai, a concept that brings together the joy of life with that sense of purpose, of absolute knowing that you're here for a reason. Purpose is bigger than you. And if this is something that's missing from your life at the moment, then you've come to the right place. Episode 20, Seven Things to Make Your Week Shine. Part 1. The Diary and the Calendar Several years ago, I was going through a particularly difficult time in my life. I was experiencing a health challenge, and my body wasn't functioning at its most optimal. I had been given a beautiful diary with gorgeous illustrations on each page, and with the full week spread out across two pages meaning that each day had its own section, a space to fill. Normally, I would have quite easily filled up each section with the usual never-ending list of to-do things that I could then tick off and feel some sense of accomplishment each time. But this diary was special. It was too beautiful to fill up with grudge seemed to offer me more. I decided to use this diary as an opportunity to put into every section on every page something I really loved doing, so that whenever I opened this beautiful diary, I would see a week of loveliness stretching out in front of me, rather than a mess of admin, work, appointments and drudge. Nothing grand or flashy, just something each day that I could ensure I carved out time to really enjoy. There would be no cluttering up my diary of loveliness with solemn appointments and nagging reminders. They went on my calendar instead. Interestingly, according to etymonline.com, the word Diary has a Proto-Indo-European root, Deyu, which means to shine. Contrast this with the word calendar, which comes from the Latin calare, meaning to announce solemnly or call out. Harking back to the time when Roman priests would call out when they saw the new moon, and from this they would then mark out the rest of the month. Anyway, to make my week really shine, I would write down at least one shiny thing to enjoy every day. Monday, loose leaf tea in a teapot with a china cup and saucer. Tuesday, paint my toenails and put in some cream on my feet afterwards. Wednesday, come home from work the slightly longer way to see the daffodils in the park. That kind of thing. Simple things that didn't really require much effort on my part and that I was sure to be able to find time for would really make my day shine. After a few weeks, I started to notice real differences in every area of my life. The health issue that had been troubling me resolved itself. My apartment looked different. I was eating different foods and really savouring them. That little diary brought the shine back into my life. I'm a station news super fan and I still make the distinction between things to put in my diary, things to make my day shine, and things to put on my calendar for more solemn and less shiny necessities. I'm not convinced that there could be any digital substitute to these, and if there were, I'm not even sure I'd want one. Every day is a gift, 
And it's easy to lose track of this when we fill it with clutter. There is a Scandinavian folk tale that illustrates how each day has its own qualities we can appreciate. Part 2. The Tale of the Days of the Week Once upon a time, there was a young girl whose name was Linnea. She lived in a small village and was known throughout the village as being somebody who brightened up the world around her. On Monday, Linnea woke up early and greeted the day with enthusiasm. For her, Monday was a fresh start, a chance to reset and begin again. She took a little stroll through the woods, appreciating the fresh air and the possibilities that lay ahead. On Tuesday, Linnea focused on her strength. She would spend time helping her neighbours with difficult tasks, such as carrying their heavy shopping bags or fetching water. Her acts of service not only strengthened her muscles, but also her bonds within the community. On Wednesday, Linnea visited the village elder to listen to stories and learn. This day was dedicated to expanding her mind and understanding the world a little better. Thursday was market day, a day of abundance. Linnea loved the bustling markets and the abundance of produce. She relished the vibrant colours and the lively conversations. Friday was the day of love and relationships. Linnea would spend time with her family and friends, cooking meals together and sharing stories. Saturday was Linnea's day of adventure. She would explore new places, climb hills or take a different path. Discovering something new made Saturday her favourite day. On Sunday, Linnea took time to reflect on her week. She would sit by the river, meditate and give thanks for the beauty she'd experienced. Sunday was her day of rest and gratitude, a time to recharge and prepare for the new week ahead. Part 3. Finding what we love. When we're children, if somebody asks us what we love doing, usually we're able to answer without hesitation. For me, it was picnics. Picnics were my most favourite thing in the world. I loved everything about them. My grandfather was the king of picnics. He would pack up the car with a table and deck chairs, proper picnic basket and cutlery, glasses, flask of tea, salt and pepper. And my granny would prepare packets of sandwiches, fruit and little tins of cakes. Everything would taste exquisitely useful. The picnic basket brought out my inner yogi bear and brought and still brings me great joy. It takes some effort to prepare, but the enjoyment far outweighs the energy spent in preparing for it. Finding a mixture of things you love that are easy to do and require little effort, and things you love that take more effort, but afterwards you feel fabulous such as going for a swim, making a picnic, reconnecting with somebody you would like to get in touch with, or even clearing out some clutter, is key. It can be more difficult to answer the question, what do you love doing, as we get older and lose touch with the wisdom of childhood. But it's essential to our overall, well, overall well-being, and is one of the four components of the Japanese concept of a kigai. Kigai roughly translates into a reason to live. Think of four circles. The first circle contains what you love, your passion. The second, what the world needs, your mission. The third circle contains what you're good at. This is your vocation. The final circle, what you can get paid for, your profession. Now, picture these circles, one to the north, one to the south, 
one to the east and the other to the west, so that there is a spot in the middle where they all converge. This is the sweet spot. This is your Ikigai. Christian Louboutin, King of Shoes, said, If you do what you love, it is the best way to relax. Keep your calendars for pulling out reminders to yourself of things that you need to remember. Keep your diary, your little book of shining possibilities, to ensure that each day shines brighter for you and brings more joy to your week. If you're wondering what you love doing, then this is great news. It means that your spark of creativity, of curiosity, is ready to burn brighter and you're ready for the next stage of your journey. Take some time today with a piece of paper and make a list of things that you'd like to do. Make you smile and go from there. If you'd like to solve the puzzle of what makes you you, and find out your unique blueprint, your treasure map that reveals who you are and what you're here to do. Visit my website and follow the link to my soul treasure map. This will show you how to uncover your soul's true purpose so that the rest of your journey is an easier one. To find out more, visit my website at www.iamjennywilson.com. Here, you can download my free PDF ebook, The Hidden Language of Colour. Just follow the free ebook link. You can check out my YouTube channel, Jenny Wilson Soul Language, or you can follow me on Instagram, at I am Jenny Wilson. Let's reconnect next time and explore more of the universal language of the soul. In the meantime, keep expanding and enjoy the journey.